Hello there, and welcome to Krieg 101, with me, Iron Warrior Cosplay. Part 1 Introduction In life, war. In death, peace. In life, shame. In death, atonement. The final litany of the Litany of Sacrifice recited by Krieg Corman when entering battle. The Death Corps of Krieg is a name given to the Astra Militarum regiments that originate from the devastated post-nuclear death world of Krieg in the Segmentum Tempestus. Krieg was the site of a rebellion against the Imperium of Man over 1,500 standard years ago in the 40th millennium and was bombarded with nuclear weapons followed by 500 Terran years of grinding warfare to purge the heretical rebels. After all those years of nuclear destruction and bitter trench warfare, Krieg was reduced to a scorched radioactive husk of a world composed of dust and mud whose surviving people were forced to retreat into underground hive cities to survive the toxic planetary environment. The Death Corps of Krieg is a siege specialist Militarum Regimento of the Astra Militarum and the regiments raised on Krieg seek to repent for their former treachery against the Emperor by displaying a disturbing disregard for their own lives in combat. The Death Corps troops excel in wars of attrition and defensive combat in particular. That was a segment read from the Warhammer 40k wiki, Death Corps of Krieg. Part 2 Krieg Cosplay Basic Clothing Okay, so there's a list of stuff. Trench coat, shoulders, belt, boots, putties, Y harness, uh, chest box, gas mask hoses, balaclava, neck cowl, the gas mask itself, helmet, gloves, backpacks, blankets, frag grenades, loads of little bits and bobs. But we're going to start off with the first thing. And that's a really decent t-shirt. Now, you're probably thinking, yeah, I have a t-shirt. I have bought a specific t-shirt that I would highly recommend. It's not something you have to buy, you honestly don't have to buy this at all. But it's a long sleeve t-shirt that's also quite a long t-shirt in general that has thumb holes in the sleeves. Here is an image obviously on the screen for you guys to see. Um, this shirt is amazing because not only can you tuck it into your trousers and it stays tucked in, but when you put your gloves on and you've got your thumb through the thumb hole, the sleeves stay in your gloves the whole day so you don't show any skin. Now, not showing skin, that's an important part, personally, for being a Krieg cosplayer, because you look at any Krieg, there's no skin. You don't see any skin at all, because their their home planet is irradiated. Their, their home planet is completely... It's, 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 a, it's a death world. It's crazy. Well, they can't be showing any you know, skin on a death world, so they cover themselves up. Well, I take pride in the fact that uh, I hide all, like, every single bit of my skin, from the gas mask to my hands, uh, you don't see anything at all. Now, a big part of that is this t-shirt, because without this t-shirt, if I just wore a regular short sleeve t-shirt, or even a regular long sleeve t-shirt, without the thumb holes, it would keep sliding back, and if I was to lift my arm, or like grab my gun, or change pose, you might be able to see the skin between the cuff of my trench coat and the bottom of my glove. And to me, it's not something you want photos of, is of your skin showing when you're in a death court of Creed cosplay, because they're meant to be completely covered. So, the first thing I recommend is this. This is the t-shirt I recommend you getting if you're going to do a Krieg cosplay. Now the next item on the list is a decent pair of trousers. Obviously, either matching whatever colour 
uh, Death Corps of Krieg, you're doing, you're doing the blue uniform, the green uniform, the khaki uniform, the dark, dark grey uniform. It's entirely up to you. Um, I've seen some people go for the blue trench coat, but with like green trousers. So again, you can you can sort of make your own version of a Krieg. There's no exact color scheme for whatever Krieg. I've seen people paint their tabletop Kriegs mad colors. Like uh, I've seen them do a bunch of red Kriegs. I've seen do, I've seen a bunch of yellow Kriegs. So it's it's entirely up to you what you do. But if you're trying to go for sort of as sort of let's say law accurate or uh, like artwork accurate then you could go for you know exactly that color if you like it's entirely up to you um, I kind of went with my own kind of style I have light grayish trousers with like a very dark trench coat um, but then I have green putties uh, you can get different color putties but we'll get onto that later um, so a decent pair of trousers because you need to be comfortable um and a and a belt i suggest getting a belt belts are a lifesaver because when you when you wear that long sleeve shirt that's quite long if you decide to get that one it's a very lengthy shirt when you tuck that in that's never untucked that's not going to untuck at all throughout the entire cotton you can run and jump and do whatever you want that shirt is staying tucked in because it's so long and that's what you want so you tuck that shirt into your trousers do your trousers up put your belt on you'll be fine. In terms of what color belt, it's entirely up to you. Your trench coat's going to cover it anyway. Um, I, I have a specific belt that I bought for my Krieg, which is just a brown leather belt. I just I just eBayed a brown leather belt and I found it. So you've got your shirt, you've got your trousers, you've got your belt on. So that's basically a standard, you know, and a pair of socks, obviously. Just any old pair of socks. And that's you pretty much ready to start kitting yourself up as a Death Corps of Krieg. Now, this is where we get onto my lists. Part three, the main kit. My first item on the list is probably one of two or three things that I would personally say are some of the hardest things to find when you're cosplaying a Death Corps of Krieg. The first item on the list is a trench coat. Now, I know this can be the bane of anybody's existence. When trying to do a Krieg cosplay, if you can't find a decent trench coat, it's pretty much the end of it. It's so difficult to find a really good one. I tried for so long to try to find a trench coat, but due to my shoulder width and my sheer size and height, uh, I couldn't find one that fit me comfortably or even found one that would even remotely fit me comfortably and not be incredibly tight. So I had to go to uh, the custom side of things. A friend of mine called Holly, who is an incredible seamstress, I commissioned from her a Krieg trench coat. She had an amazing pattern. She modified it a little bit. I went over. She measured me at a con. Um, I went over, chilled out with them for a bit. She finished the coat off there and then. We even added things to it um, for the shoulder mounting and, and such, which I'll get into. But she was able to make me this incredible trench coat. So here's a small video clip of the trench coat. Um, this trench coat is double-breasted, uh, weathered by yours truly. Um, it's uh, it's lined really nicely. It's got a decent weight to it. I absolutely love this trench coat. It is perfectly custom fit and custom made to me. Now, if you're of a slimmer figure, if you're not as tall and not as broad-shouldered, you could probably find a trench coat online and just buy it off the rack. If you can, you are incredibly lucky. Um, don't get me wrong, this custom trench coat did cost me a, a, a little bit. Um, I don't mind, though, because it is not only an incredible piece of clothing, but it's one of a kind. I, I own the only one of this coat because Holly hasn't made one of these trench coats before for a Death Corps of Krieg. She has now, and this is it, and I own it, and it's amazing. The buttons I bought on eBay... I have no specifics on the buttons. I just bought ones that looked really nice. Um, and I really, really like the ones I bought. So the 
the Death Corps of Creek trench coat, yes, one of probably two or three things that I would personally class as some of the hardest things to find for a Death Corps of Creek cosplay. The second item on my list will have to be the shoulder armor. Um, these are mine, as you guys can see here. I have a skull on one side. I have my uh, regiment number on the other. And uh, my regiment number is the 497th. Now, I have a little copy and paste thing here I did of my Krieg. Now, I copy and pasted this from online uh, onto my uh, album description on my cosplay page. So I'm going to read that out for you um, so that you guys know sort of a little bit more behind my particular Krieg. Uh, even though it's a copy and paste, it's basically how I would like people to know about my Krieg and what my Krieg is and what regiment he's a part of. So the Death Corps 497th Heavy Siege Artillery Regiment was assigned to the 11th Assault Corps 88th Siege Army in 812.M41 during the infamous campaign known as the Siege of Vrax. The 497th remained with the 11th Assault Corps throughout the fight on Vrax and were finally withdrawn when the enemy forces occupying the planet were all neutralized in 830.M41. That was just a, a little background on my uh, on my Krieg and how I particularly, you know, want my Krieg to be seen. Um, I really like, you know, Siege and stuff. Obviously, I'm an Iron Warrior at heart, so it would be, you know, it would be a Siege artillery regiment I would go for. But um, the 497th, uh, that's who I've picked. And I really, really like the uh, the little story behind it, the little copy and paste that I just read. I really, really like that. I think that's fantastic. But back to the shoulders themselves. These shoulders, the particular ones you're seeing on screen now, um, these are from the Kill Team box set, the Krieg versus Orcs, the one that came out not that long ago. Um, I really liked the design behind these shoulders. I, th I thought they looked really, really cool. Now, um, originally I didn't have plans to actually build these particular ones for my Krieg, um, but until I got commissioned to make this exact set, um, I was like, oh, okay, why not? So I made the pattern, I made them for the customer, uh, he wore them to MCM. Uh, I actually have a picture of uh, me pointing at the shoulder uh, at MCM. It was so cool to see something that I had created on somebody's cosplay out in the wild, like at a con. It was, it was such a surreal feeling. It was so, so cool. I cannot tell you how cool it is. Um, but after I had made uh, his shoulders, obviously I thought to myself, well, you know, I've made the pattern, I have it here, I might as well make a set for my Krieg. So I used the exact same pattern, the exact same build method. Um, I did laser cut myself um, some bolt heads with little aquilas on them, just add a little bit of added detail and stuff. Um, and then I painted them the same as I painted his, um, did the stencils and stuff. But I went for um, like a steel, like a grey metal-y colour. Uh, and I made the shoulders much like I made his, try to make them look like they're not not so much cast iron, but make them look like they're metal. And um, I think I did quite a good job. Obviously, when people know they're foam, you know, you, you, you sort of lose that, you know, you sort of lose that sort of thought like, oh, look, they're looking metal. You're like, eh, yeah, they're foam. But you sort of lose that. But like I, uh, like I said to a few people at the con, um, you know, as much as I like this design, and as much as like he has his set of shoulders, I have mine. Um, there are other sets of Krieg shoulders that you can get. Um, I'll throw some pictures up here, like the the sort of standard ones that you can get. There, there's so many different variants of like pretty much anything Krieg related that you can get. Um, I just happen to go for these ones. So when it comes to Krieg shoulders. I, I'm going to strongly recommend that you obviously pick whichever set you are drawn to. If you really, really like the ones from the new Kill Team box, then go ahead and make those. If not, then, you know, make the original set. There are so many 3D files out there. There's uh, there's a set of 3D printed shoulders that you can get. 
Um, I also believe that Yanovich um, also 3D printed his shoulders, and they're pretty cool. Obviously, in the end, it's whatever your preference is, whatever you particularly like, whatever you're drawn to, that's what you should do. The third item on my list, yeah, it's a pretty simple item, but it's also a very, very important item in a fair few ways, and that is a Death Corps of Krieg belt. There's nothing specific about it that makes a Death Corps of Krieg belt, but on my cosplay, it's it's specifically a Death Corps of Krieg belt. Um, this is actually a, a double hole uh, belt. I wanted the width because I wanted something that would show better than just your standard thin single hole belt. I wanted a nice wide belt, so I went for a double hole wide belt. Um, this particular belt I found on eBay, super super cheap. Um, in fact, I like this belt so much and it is tried and tested that I have a backup one in my suitcase just ready to go. Um, I always tend to buy more than my, you know, I, I, I'll I buy two of everything if I can. If I can buy two of everything, I will. If it's too expensive, then I won't. But belts, for example, um, you know, they're not too expensive. As, well, especially these ones, these were pretty cheap. They, they were eBay finds. Um, but like I said, you know, you've got your coat on, you've got your shoulders on. The belt does quite a lot of important jobs and... I'll be getting onto that as we go along, um, but a good belt, like I said at the beginning when you're getting a belt for your trousers, a good belt can make or break your cosplay because I've been in the Space Marine and I just picked up a really cheap belt uh, just, to, just to wear inside the Space Marine and believe it or not the belt was so uncomfortable to wear. It was the, the fabric twisted all the time, it was horrible, the buckle would just dig into you all the time. It was a horrible belt, so I got rid of that. Um, but this belt in particular, especially the buckle, looks really, really nice. Uh, it's quite clean and it has like a stitched pattern on it. I think it suits the Krieg absolutely perfectly. Now, the fourth item on my list, going back to the belt as well, um, this is a Y strap. I call it a Y strap, some people call it like a Y uh, harness, there's there's different ways of calling it. Um, this particular one that I'm showing you on video right now is a real one. It's actually a real one. It's uh, it's not a reproduction. I'm very very happy with this. I found this on eBay. It was a, it was an absolute bargain. I was I could not believe I found it. It's a really really nice harness. Now this clips onto your belt. So there are two hooks at the front, and there's a singular hook at the back. That singular hook loops behind the belt and then hooks upwards, whereas the two on the front hook from the front of the belt. You don't have to tuck those under the belt. Now, these hook onto the belt, so if your belt is nice and tight on you and, and, and where you want it, sort of in your midriff, not all the way down where your belt line would be, but a little bit higher on your stomach, that's where the belt should be. The straps go on, and those straps then get tightened up onto that belt so you've got yourself a really decent, sturdy harness to then move on to the next step of putting on the respirator box. As you've probably guessed, the fifth item on my list is the respirator box itself. Now, my respirator box is permanently attached to the harness. The, uh, the Y strap that I wear, um, I have two straps that come down separately on it, every one of them does, and on the front of that has two extra hooks. I've hooked those into the box and then cable tied them on permanently. Um, I know cable ties can be undone, but I have no intention of taking them off. Now that they're on, they're on, that's it. This respirator box, I made myself. It's EVA foam with a, a air pressure dial in it with a small a, a skull transfer. Um, it is a really tidy box. The two little knobs on the front are from an old amplifier that I used to own. The LEDs are just plain LEDs powered by a 9 volt battery. The um, gas mask hose connector on the side is actually a brand new addition as of uh, the Wrexham Comic Con. The night before I actually modified that box to be able to take that fitting. Now I can take the gas mask hose 
off the gas mask and the box so I can just chill out because having the gas mask hose attached to either one or the other was just a bit of a headache because if it was attached to the box it kept you know tipping the box over and getting in the way if it was permanently attached to the mask it would just be a weight on the mask that I just didn't want and while we were at MCM uh, I actually had this issue where it was permanently attached to the box and when we were just chilling out on the last day of the con I had my gas mask hooked to my shoulder out of the way but I had nowhere to put the tube because it was in the box and I just have to kept tucking it under my shoulder all the time and it was just it was a pain in the ass and it kept getting in the way so now with this modification I've done it is absolutely amazing and I fully recommend you do exactly this to yours as well make the gas mask tube removable from both ends the sixth item you've probably again already guessed is the actual gas mask hose itself this segment is going to be very short and sweet go to eBay type in gas mask hose usually it's the first one that comes up here's what mine looks like it's just a plain simple black gas mask hose I've weathered the connectors both ends so that you know a bit more weathering works looks really really nice um, it's basically as black and white as that go to eBay type in gas mask hose it's pretty much the first one that comes up the seventh item on the list is a balaclava now I recommend getting a lycra balaclava if you can get one that is much longer um, I have a full face balaclava with uh, an extra long neck so that I can tuck that it, can, it goes down to my collarbone almost I can tuck that in to my t-shirt and uh, lift my t-shirt up a little bit that will um, stay tucked in pretty much the whole day and prevent any um, skin showing around my neck um, balaclavas are, are absolutely ideal for those of you who are bearded um, I use balaclavas everywhere the balaclava I wear in my space marine I have two um, they're both fabric balaclavas they're, they're not warm but I've always preferred wearing those in the Iron Warrior because I feel like they they soak up sweat a lot better um, so I don't get like sweat running down my forehead and into my eyes while I'm in the Space Marine um, but in my Death Corps of Krieg I've gone for a Lycra balaclava because I need it to be breathable but more importantly I need it to be thin so that the gas mask can sort of conform to my face a bit better and I get that sort of much I get a much more rigid and sort of tight fit around my face with the gas mask when I'm wearing uh, this particular type of balaclava. Um, I have multiples of this balaclava for the Krieg because when you chop and change them out from a sweaty one it's always nice to put a dry one on. Sometimes I will just put a dry one on. Um, sometimes I'll, I, I just don't bother and I just wear the sweaty one all day. It's not the best feeling but I'm so used to it now in my Iron Warrior that you know in the end it's your sweat and it doesn't matter so you know but I highly recommend a thin breathable lycra long neck wide face balaclava when uh, I wear mine I always wear it under my nose um, here's a funny picture for you of me after taking my gas mask off um, that's how I look under my gas mask because I always keep it under my nose um, the funny part with my mustache is because when I take the gas mask off um, I've pulled the balaclava down a little bit so my moustache pokes out. It's quite funny, but yeah, um, it is super comfortable. It is really nice to wear, very breathable, uh, lightweight. I, I highly recommend it. Um, best thing to do, go to eBay and type in Lycra balaclava and you'll pretty much find one. There'll be options in the list for uh, how long you want the neck. Um, go for the longest one you can. The longer the better. That way you can tuck it into your t-shirt and you don't have to worry about moving your head around and you don't have to worry about anything like that your skin won't show and it will be absolutely ideal now the eighth item on my list actually um came to me when i watched um a video uh oh, i'm trying to remember what video it was the video i watched was like of a deathcore cosplayer uh, walking around a con and they were being filmed by a friend of theirs and I noticed that even though they had a balaclava on their neck looked quite small even though the tube was sort of covering most of it and the the, the gas mask they had on was like an actual gas mask and it was like a, a fabric one 
um, like a canvasy one almost. Um, even though that was there, it, it just made their neck look very thin. Whether they just had a thin neck or not, I'm not sure. But I thought to myself, let me have a look at some of my test photos, because I took a bunch of test photos after making my gas mask and with a balaclava and stuff on. Just wearing a, my normal t-shirt and normal clothes, it was just a gas mask test. I realized that I needed to just add a little bit of padding around my neck, just a little bit. So what I bought, um, it don't get me wrong, it is quite hot to wear, but because it's around my neck, I don't really worry too much because it's not around my face. But um, this is a fleece uh, neck warmer for like winter and it's got a little pull string on the back of it so you can tighten it around um you can wear this like over your face if you wanted to like over like the bridge of your nose and down so you can keep yourself warm in the winter um i wear mine sort of rolled up a little bit at the bottom and i pull it over the top of the balaclava and i i then unroll it and it tucks itself behind my trench coat collar and down in front of me where i roll it up a little bit um when this goes over the balaclava I pull the balaclava back up and obviously, I, like I said, I keep it under my nose and when the gas mask goes on, obviously the um, so the fleece uh, neck warmer goes much further down out of the way so that the gas mask can have room to go on. Once the gas mask is tightened up, I'll pull it up a little bit around my neck and I feel that looks absolutely ideal. Um, there are photos here of it, obviously, to show you guys this is how it looks on me. These fleece neck warmers, you can literally just, again, eBay, go to eBay, type in fleece neck warmer. They're, they're in black. They actually come in varying different sizes. You can get longer ones and short ones. You can get ones that go over your, uh, over your shoulders completely. Um, I did think about getting one of them, but I actually just went for the sort of the tubed one um, with a little pull string, and it works absolutely fantastic covers your neck really well um keeps the balaclava in check as well even though mine's quite long and tucks into my collar but ideally it just hides your skin from being shown especially when you sort of pull up your collar a little bit on your trench coat and you pull it forward a touch everything just sort of sits right and it looks personally to me really really clean The ninth item on my list, but also on my incredibly difficult to find list, is the Death Core of Krieg gas mask. Now, before I continue, you can find everything you want to know about this exact gas mask that I have made here in my Krieg gas mask video. I want to give a huge shout out to Janovich for the help with that because without his original how to make a gas mask uh, video, I personally wouldn't have been able to create the patterns that I used for my own version of the gas mask. Seriously, huge thanks to his video tutorial. Without that video tutorial, I wouldn't have even known where to begin with my gas mask. So thank you so much for that, Janovich. Really, really appreciate it. My gas mask is, as you guys probably already know, made of foam. Uh, I've painted it up to look like leather, but it's actually a 5mm EVA foam using the patterns that I uh, modified from Janovich, and the uh, exact building technique that Janovich used, I also um, used the same building technique in mine. Um, inside, are uh, the lenses and the uh, gas mask hose connector of a uh, Soviet era GP5 gas mask. Now, the Soviet era GP5 gas mask you can find on eBay if you just eBay search. Um, I, I use the term, the search terms, uh, Russian GP5 gas mask, but they are Soviet era gas masks, but that's how people have been putting them up, up on their eBay, so just type in Russian GP5 gas mask, you'll get that search result. The gas masks are relatively cheap. Um, you do need to understand, though, that if you're not going to use the gas mask as, um, you know, like just over your head and use that as part of your Creed cosplay, um, you are going to need to cut, up, cut it up and cut around it. Like I said, if you guys go to the video that I've linked uh, in that video uh, description of the gas mask video, um, there is an original link 
to Yanovich making his gas mask. So there's plenty of material out there in terms of videos and information about how to make uh, a Krieg gas mask. If you go to my cosplay page and go to my albums and find my Death Core of Krieg album, in there you will also see the paper templates I used and how I made my gas mask. So if you guys want to go check that out, you are more than welcome to. Um, the gas mask I made for my Death Core of Krieg is one of a kind. I only have one of them. Um, but soon I've decided I'm going to be making a second one for myself because like I've said previously, it's always good to have two of everything just so you have something to fall back on in an emergency. So that's the uh, the gas mask. For the full video of the gas mask, I suggest you go here, check out the gas mask video, let me know what you think. Please like that video. Uh, I'd really, really appreciate it. So now that you have your t-shirt, your trousers, your belt, your trench coat, your shoulders, your Y harness with your belt and your gas mask box, your gas mask hose, your balaclava, your neck cowl, the gas mask itself, the next thing you need is number 10 on my list, and that is a Death Corps of Krieg helmet. Now, the Death Corps of Krieg helmet you see here in the video, uh, I actually bought that from Etsy. Um, it is a vacuum-formed helmet. It came in plain black. Here's an image of me the day that it arrived. Um, this particular helmet uh, wasn't actually that expensive, um, but I did have to modify it a bit. Some of the uh, pieces on the inside of the helmet really hurt the side of my head, so I had to um, re-glue those Dremel and cut away some of the sharp pointy bits, and I then re-glued them in uh, so that I don't like, you know, I don't scratch the side of my head anymore. Um, there were the uh, little metal tabs that were bent around and they, they were really, really scratching the inside of my head whenever I wore the, the helmet just for fun. So I had to modify that because comfort is key. When it comes to cosplaying, you have to be comfortable in your cosplay. If you're super uncomfortable in your cosplay, you're just going to be sore and pissed off and have a really horrible time. So always make your cosplays super, super comfortable. Now, as for the helmet, this is the paint job I did to it. So here's before. And here's after. The stippling effect I did on this, I used a very small, uh, very, very, very broken and knackered old chip brush that I had. Um, I, I used that and just stabbed it repeatedly onto the helmet with silver paint. Uh, it took a while to do, but I'm, I, I got it all done. It's such a nice effect all over the helmet. I think it looks really, really good with the silver. I then uh, lightly sprayed it over with some lead belcher and some uh, dark copper and some browns just to give it a different, you know, different look in different lights. Um, but then to top that off, uh, my wonderful friend Warp Raven cosplay, she, uh, well, it's it's not um, not resin cast. It's she rubber cast me the Aquila that goes on the front. The Aquila that's there, that, that the damaged Aquila that looks like it's been through a lot of wars uh, and been on this helmet for many, many, many years. Um, that's actually made of rubber and uh, it's just glued to the helmet and it looks absolutely incredible. So I dry brushed that with some really nice gold that I had. Um, but the, uh, the mixed in with that gold then was a bit of brass color as well. Looks so nice. I absolutely love that. Here's a close up of the Aquila for you. I, I think it looks absolutely stunning. Um, what I then did after that was I um, weathered the uh, straps. So the two leather straps that came down. Um, sadly, there were no buckles on them. Like it wouldn't actually buckle together. So I did have to put some Velcro on those. Um, funnily enough, Yanovich himself said uh, that he thought that was a really good idea, so I thought I'm, I'm quite, quite proud of that. Um, with that being said, the helmet is available on uh, Etsy. Um, if you guys want to jump jump over to Etsy and just type in Death Corps of Krieg helmet, it usually comes up. I'm not sure if the seller is there anymore. Go give him a try if you guys uh, manage to get one. That's fantastic. Um, really decently priced, quite strong helmets, even though they're vacuum formed, very, very strong, very resilient. Um, you'll just need to repaint it and modify it a little bit so you can get it looking exactly how you want for your Death Corps Krieg. Item number 11 on my list is 
the Krieg gloves. Now, my gloves are just a decent pair of leather gloves with a Velcro strap on them. I strongly recommend you get a decent pair of gloves. Do not, under any circumstances, get super crappy cheapo gloves because the faux leather they use on them can sometimes just come off and come away from the gloves and it just ends up turning to powder. It gets everywhere and it's absolutely horrible. I bought mine from eBay. Um, eBay has been, a, you know, very, very good to me over the years and I always go back to eBay. I have tried Amazon a few times for a few things and I just find that it's either too expensive or when you do buy it, the um, carriage or the postage is like twice as much as what you're paying for the item. So um, as someone who doesn't have Amazon Prime, I tend to go to eBay and I find a lot of really, really good things there. Now, the gloves I'm showing you on screen here now, they are just the nicest gloves. I'm actually tempted to get a second pair because, again, like I keep saying, it's always good to have two of everything so you always have something to fall back on. So if I lose these pair of gloves, at least I know in my suitcase, I've got another pair ready to go. Um, they're super comfy, super hard wearing. If you are lucky enough um, to get a pair that fit your hands really, really well, like mine, uh, if you get, because I get to guess my size, because the way they, they tell you to measure your hands, it's not quite as accurate as the way you would normally measure a pair of gloves. But on the eBay listing, the size is always like one more than what you think it is. But mine luckily fit me really, really well, and I can actually still use my touch screen on my phone. So that's kind of handy, not having to take my gloves off all the time. So I can take pictures and stuff with my phone with my gloves still on. Um, texting is a bit difficult because the buttons are so small, but it's actually really, really handy to have a pair of gloves that could still use a touch screen phone while you're in cosplay. Item number 12 on my list is a good pair of Krieg boots. These boots I'm showing you on screen right now are actually the boots I wore for three seasons when I was a groundsman at a holiday park years ago. And uh, I actually found these while looking for a pair of boots uh, in the uh, garage that we have. I was trying to find an old pair of boots to wear with my death call. I found these and instantly knew that these were the boots that I was going to wear with my death call because not only are they weathered to hell, but they're naturally weathered. I haven't done any weathering these. The only things I've done to these is put a brand new pair of laces in them because the laces were absolutely shot to bits. Um, I genuinely love how these look with the putties and the whole uniform together. I'll show you guys a photo. They're super comfy. I love them. Uh, I have got a pair of insoles in them for when I was walking around MCM. I actually gave the same pair of insoles because I have two pairs of them. Um, and I gave a pair... Uh, a brand new one uh, to Ranger of Krieg up in Wrexham and he put them in and he tried them on for the first time and he said they were the most comfiest things he's ever worn so I'm really really happy that he uh, he, he likes the insoles. Um, I try my best to buy the same pair of insoles every time because there's one particular brand I really like and uh, the, I, I find them to be the comfiest ones. Um, genuinely though get yourself a super nice pair of boots but I would strongly recommend, if you can, buy an old pair of boots or a second-hand pair of boots or buy a new pair of boots, but try and weather them as best you can. I've never weathered boots in my life, like, on purpose. So that's something I'm probably going to have to learn in the future, and then I can tell you guys how to do it. But as of right now, all I know is I was lucky enough to find a pair of boots that were just perfect for this cosplay. Item number 13, and that is a pair of putties. You can get putties in green, gray, khaki. I've, reason, I've even seen them in blue. Uh, I've seen them in a really dark green, and I've seen them in like an army green. Um, I think it's called like olive green or something. Um, that's the pair I have. I have a pair of olive green ones because I like the way they complement the, the the gray of the trousers and the sort of the brown dirtiness of the boots. But when 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 I wrap them around, they look really really nice. So a pair of putties. The ones I have are not real. They are super cheapo ones from eBay. Uh, if you guys go on eBay uh, and look up um, army putties. You can see so many different colors and so many different variants. Um, I think, if I'm right, they come in uh, a, a perfectly standard length. I don't think 
there's different length ones. I could not tell you for sure. What I can tell you though, is that when you do buy them, I strongly recommend that you go to YouTube and look up how to put on a pair of putties. There's so many cool videos out there to show you the best way to do it with like the twist techniques and stuff like that. Um, to make sure that your putties stay on, stay tight, and they don't come loose while you're running around a con. It is the most frustrating thing when a pair of putties or one of your putties comes loose and you have to, in full cosplay, try and do it back up. You have to undo the whole thing and then you have to roll it back up and redo it. Putties can be such a headache, but if you do it nice and tight the first time and wrap it correctly, take your time with them you'll have the best time with putties i've had to learn the hard way i had both my putties come loose at a few cons uh once at mcm may uh once even recently uh in birmingham um you know it, if you don't do them tight enough then they will come loose so luckily i've only had twice they've come off but the rest of the time they have been incredible and i absolutely love them um don't don't bother getting real ones, honestly. Unless you're a reenactor and you have real ones and you, you want to use those with your Creed cosplay, you're more than welcome to. But honestly, the cheaper ones will do you just as good. They are fantastic, good quality, and they are super nice. I hate taking them off. My legs feel really naked without them afterwards, but when you've worn them for a whole day, you really get used to them and they, they hold your calves really, really nicely. I genuinely love a good pair of putties, and I think they look fantastic on my uh, Death Corps of Creed cosplay. Item number 14. Where would the Death Corps of Krieg be without their backpacks? Now, this is an interesting one, because this backpack I'm showing you here is my current backpack, complete with the blanket and everything. Um... This is a, a decent backpack, but it doesn't really look like the backpacks that the Death Corps of Krieg wear. Now, quite recently, someone posted uh, an image of a backpack that they were going to get for their Death Corps of Krieg cosplay on Facebook. And I saw the backpack and instantly fell in love. But I knew for a fact that it was going to be an extortionate amount of money and that it was going to be ridiculous postage or something to get into this country so i asked him for the link just to see sent me the link to amazon which was a us link i then copied it and changed it to the uk amazon i found the same bag in, in the uk it's not too expensive it is a bit dear but it's not overly expensive it looks identical to the creek backpack from the models and I really, really wanted. Here's my backpack, again, just to show you guys. This is what mine looks like. And this is the one that I was linked to on Amazon, which I am going to be purchasing as soon as I can. Now, I really, really like the backpack that I've got now, so I'm going to keep it, obviously, but I'm not going to use it for my Death Corps of Krieg. I'm just going to use it as a backpack. But the one I'm getting for my Death Corps of Krieg, I'm going to modify with, like, Aquilas and stuff on it, and I think it's going to look so, so cool. I absolutely love the look, the way it looks and just the general square body of it. It's just so pleasing to look at. I'm really excited. I hope it's super good quality. But uh, for the price you're paying for it, I'm going to say it's probably really good quality. But with that being said, if you want the bag that I'm currently rocking now, um, again, you can get that on eBay. Just type in Canvas Army Backpack. It comes up. It comes in a multitude of colors. Honestly, it's a super good, super cheap way to start your Krieg cosplay. I love it. It looks really good on my Krieg. I'm so, so happy with it. But now that I've found this one, I just want to get it so I can upgrade my cosplay just a little bit more. Item number 15 on my list is the death core blanket if you want to call it that um it's the blanket that goes across the top of the backpack um, not every krieg has them some have different things on their backpacks but mostly you'll see uh, wrapped up in like two straps the uh, death core blanket over the top of the backpack the um, as mentioned in the previous one the new backpack that i'm thinking of getting the one i just want to upgrade my cosplay just that little bit more um that blanket would look so so cool over the top of that 
that really nice square backpack. I think that'll look really, really tidy. But even right now, over my canvas one, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, but in uh, in sort of relation to what I'm saying, the backpack I have now, it's always empty usually, except for maybe a bottle of water. So what I do is I um, stuff a, a pillow inside it, like a bed, your bed pillow. I stuff a, a spare bed pillow inside the backpack to bulk it out. And then that's what the blanket sits on top of. That's what gives my bag that structure, is the uh, the pillow that I put inside it. Now, some people might think that's a bit mad, but for now, that's what I've got. When, like I've said before, that new backpack, I think it's quite rigid and quite solid anyway. So I'm not going to need to pad it out with anything. But I genuinely cannot tell you how cool the Krieg blanket looks over pretty much any backpack, whether it be the, the one I've got now or the new one, I think it's just going to look so, so good. But you don't have to go for a real wool blanket or even like a, a polyester wool blend like I've got. You can just go for just any old blanket you want. You can even get a custom one made if you like. It's entirely up to you. Um, but what I do recommend is with the blanket that I've done, I've got these two straps that go around it. Um, I, I just I made those myself. I found the webbing and the clips and made them. But you might have to do some holes in the top of your backpack like I have done with my current one. I've got two slits on the top of them so the blanket gets held on. Um, but as for the new backpack, I don't know yet. Once I get that new one, um, which, you know, I don't know when I'll get it, but once I do get that one, I will have to work out a really decent, clean way of doing it when, uh, when the blanket goes on top because the two straps are the only thing that hold that blanket to the bag. Item number 16, the Death Course Shovel Holster. Now, this shovel holster uh, goes on your main belt. Now, again, like I said, your belt is incredibly important, and this is probably one of the most important things that it's going to be holding is your shovel holster, because in the shovel holster goes your shovel, the Krieg's primary melee weapon. Love the shovel. Who doesn't? But this shovel holster I got from eBay from an army surplus guy. It came here super clean. I recommend doing a few things to your shovel holster when you get it. If you have made your shovel like I did, or if you have a real uh, entrenchment shovel that you want to use, uh, obviously it's not cosplay safe if you use a real one, but if you do have a real one, you want to use that. I strongly recommend soaking the... Um, the leather, soaking the tiny, just dunk it in water for a good five or six minutes, take it out, and then, you know, bend the leather to what you need it to be, put the shovel inside it, strap it on up, and leave it to dry naturally. That way, the shovel holster will stay in the shape you need it to stay. Mine stays in the exact shape I wanted to because I did exactly that except I used my EVA foam shovel and then bent them both together so that they both stay in that shape. Once it had dried naturally, it was perfectly fine. Um, the only thing I did need to do to it was weather it quite heavily because it was so clean when I got it. So once it was perfectly dry, I took some boot polish to it along with some acrylic paints and uh, it is now weathered to hell and looks absolutely fantastic hanging on the side of my death core of Krieg. Item number 17. That's right, I have saved the best for last. Item number 17 is the Death Corps of Krieg shovel, or entrenchment tool, their primary melee weapon. I made mine from EVA foam and attached to that a real shovel handle. Um, so it's an EVA foam head attached to a real shovel handle. We had uh, a full-size shovel, uh, quite a long-handled shovel that we used, but it got some woodworm in it and the shovel end broke off. So we put the shovel end on a brand new handle, but I kept this knowing I would need it for something. And luckily for me, that was my Krieg shovel, and I'm so, so happy with it. I absolutely love the way the shovel works and the holster as well. Super easy to get in and out, super lightweight. It's con safe, so it's safe to go into events and stuff. I absolutely love it. What Krieger would you be without your shovel? A shovel is probably one of the single most important things a Death Corps needs. And honestly, that's it. The main list is complete. Everything on that list 
all 17 items. If you manage to gather everything together, put it all in one place, put it on bit by bit, and then stand there and look at yourself, you will be probably the happiest Krieg going. But honestly, as easy as I've made it sound, this has been a lot of research, a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of effort. The list I've just provided you there is probably the most basic list. You could add way more stuff to this. And basically, that's what's going to happen in the next part. The next part of this video is additional stuff, stuff I wanted to make after the fact, but it's mainly because after you've completed your cosplay, you can then just go nuts. <laughs> Part 4. Additional Equipment So there you go. You've completed your Death Corps of Krieg. You're wearing your trench coat, your shoulders, your belt, your Y harness, your chest box with the gas mask tube, the balaclava, your neck cowl, the gas mask itself, the helmet, your gloves, boots, putties, backpack, blanket, shovel holster, and of course, the shovel itself. You're ready to go, you're ready for combat. But what is a Death Corps without his additional equipment? Well, a Death Corps Guardsman needs a las gun. Well, here's mine. Funny story behind this one is, I built this las gun a good two years, if not more, before I decided I was going to do a Death Corps of Creed cosplay. I actually built two of these. Uh, I built one for a friend of mine called Frankie, who's Nerd Princess. She has the original one, and then I built this one for myself. Uh, I did build a third eventually, but that was a Gaunt's Ghost Las Gun for my friend Merlin. Um, but the Krieg Las Guns I've only ever built two of. And then along with your Death Corps Las Gun, you will need a bayonet. This is my bayonet. This is actually the second variant of my bayonet. The first one, I wasn't crazy happy with the design of it. So after watching a Krieg YouTube video, uh, animation someone had done, I uh, absolutely fell in love with the way the bayonets were being attached, so I decided to uh, make this one. This one's actually entirely made out of wood. Um, I'm very, very proud of this uh, this bayonet, but I do worry that maybe one day it might just snap. I'm not sure, but um, as of right now, it hasn't, so I'm quite happy with it. I actually don't put it on the lasgun that often. I actually just have it on me mainly, but uh, the day does come uh, that I need it, then I've got it on me, and then, you know, I'll be ready to go to affix bayonets. Another additional item you might need is a set of dog tags. Um, these dog tags I have here are actually from the Kill Team box set, but I actually got given these in a free gift bag that I got at uh, Games Workshop in Nottingham. Uh, we had been there all day in our Space Marines, and uh, it was such an amazing open day that uh, when we were leaving they were handing us these bags and inside was a set of death core dog tags which i immediately put into a box in my suitcase so that i could take with me to every con and wear them proudly around my neck as the death core of krieg Now, if you're not um, sort of into las guns, or you, you can't be asked to buy one or build one, um, you could always go for something a bit more, you know, I don't know, melee weapon side, and go for a trench club. Now, I actually built one after seeing a really cool image. Someone had painted their Death Corps uh, Guardsmen all um, green with like dark greens, but there was like a lot of lime greens in there too. Looked really, really nice, but one of them was holding this cog on a, on a stick, like a club. So I checked the, um, the box art and I checked up and had a, had a look for this particular model. And then I found that it was actually a legitimate model from the Kill Team box set. And he's holding a trench club and I loved it so much that I decided to make one. Here's some photos of the one that I made. Um, I absolutely love how it came out. And uh, the head is actually really, really soft too, so you can bonk people on the head quite hard with it and not actually hurt them. But yeah, if you're into melee, then pretty much make yourselves one of these. I mean, this and a shovel, you'd be an unstoppable killing machine. After that, 
I mean, you need your explosives, so why not have a look at these? Well, I actually have um, a stick grenade that my girlfriend got me for my birthday. Um, I then sanded it down. Uh, it's entirely made of wood. I sanded it down and modified it by uh, burning the handle so it looked a bit more used and abused. Painted the cap with like a gunmetal gray, and then at the top, resprayed the 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 green. Um, sanded the actual dome part so it didn't have any more resin on it and then uh, sprayed it with another um, metallic green before doing a stencil and painting the Aquila on. Um, the Aquila it took so long to paint on the front of this thing but I genuinely cannot tell you how happy I am with how this turned out. It looks absolutely amazing. But speaking of explosives, I actually also made two frag grenades. One I gave to Ranger of Krieg, uh, and another that I have. I actually need to put this on my death core at some point. But um, these are patterns I got from Evil Ted, and they are absolutely fantastic. Super easy to use, super easy to make. I actually really, really love these. Um, they're super lightweight, they're made of EVA foam, they're really, really lightweight. You can throw them around and not worry about breaking them or damaging them. Um, but honestly, always a good addition to your Death Corps of Krieg is a frag grenade. You could also, if you fancied, do a different variant of a Krieg. For example, recently I made this Krieg medic bag. And it actually opens and functions. It has Velcro on it and it opens up. I can put my gas mask inside it. I can put my putties, my balaclava, my cowl. I can put a bunch of stuff inside this. My gas mask tube. I can put a lot of stuff inside this and carry it around a con without having to worry about it too much. Along with that, I got gifted this really nice looking uh, Krieg syringe. Now, it was just a regular syringe, but now that I'm using it for my Krieg cosplay, it's a Krieg syringe. Um, this giant syringe is completely 3D printed. I've never been a massive fan of 3D printing, but it seems pretty solid. I'm still very wary of it and I don't want to break it, but I genuinely really like this prop and it's got the red liquid inside it. It's just absolutely fantastic. Um, honestly, with, with Krieg, there are so many different variants that you could do. Um, I'm actually thinking about making a, a demo expert, which I've already started making. Uh, the, um actual detonator box for but I haven't really gone any further than that uh, I would love to have one where he has a vox caster on his back so for like you know communications and stuff but honestly you could make any Krieg that you see fit part five the end well there you go I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video um, it is currently 1.59 a.m. Uh, this is my third recording session. Um, I've done three altogether, and I have to record these uh, audio uh, sessions at like 1 a.m. And I give myself an hour to record something. Uh, the reason being is because the audio uh, picks up, the microphone picks up a lot of the background noise and the vehicles and stuff during the day. But during the night or, for example, at 1 a.m. in the morning, well, 2 a.m. now, but at 1 a.m. till 2 a.m., uh, things are very, very quiet, and it's uh, it's really nice to record things. And there we have it. That is the end of the video. I want to thank everyone who has supported me uh, with this cosplay. I want to thank everyone who helped with the GoFundMe page uh, so very long ago. I do apologize that it took this long to get the Creed cosplay done, but without your support, uh, I wouldn't have been able to get half of the things for this cosplay that I wanted to. So thank you again to everyone for doing that. I really, really appreciate it to my friends and family, my followers. Really, really appreciate it. You guys are absolutely fantastic. If it wasn't for you, uh, I would be able to do what I do now. So thank you so, so very much for that. Um, but I think just to close this video off, um, I think it's best to just say if you have any questions whatsoever that I haven't answered in this video, please jump over to my cosplay page, either on my Facebook or my Instagram. Uh, you guys can message me there with any questions. Just message me there. I will get back to you when I can. Uh, things are very busy at the moment. So if you just pop me a message and uh, give me plenty of time, I will absolutely get back to you with the answer that you need, if I can give you that answer, obviously. Um, so thank you again to 
everybody i really hope you enjoyed this video it has been an absolute pleasure making this for you and really genuinely from the bottom of my heart thank you so much for following thank you so much for subscribing thank you so much for liking commenting and helping me with this cosplay seriously you guys are absolutely fantastic i shall see you all again soon bye for now